There's no life and there's no death. There's just a perpetual infinity within you. As you come out of the ego and you come out of the intellect and logic, you won't care anymore. It's only the intellect that seeks to live on earth perpetually. It's only the intellect that is fear. Within the infinite self, you can't die. You'll never be more alive than the moment after you're dead. It will be an amazement to you. One of the other things you're going to find out is how light you are. Because the physical body is jolly heavy to slip around. Every morning you wake up and you think, Oh my God, I've got to slip this 150 pounds around somewhere today. Gravity is heavy. It pulls you down to the earth and makes you exert muscular effort. If you've ever had an out-of-body experience, you'll know that when you come up out of the body, the first thing you notice is the incredible lightness of being. So develop that lightness of being. Be like a spirit rather than a dumpy, heavy, physical ego. Be a spirit. Take life in a light-hearted way. Laugh a lot. Be responsible. Be ordered. Be disciplined. Laugh. Laugh. Remember that seriousness is a disease of the ego. When you meet people that are terribly serious, what they actually are is very insecure. They are deeply trapped inside the intellect. What happens is, over a period of time, they begin to buy their own intellectual cleverness. At the beginning, that works very well, and they see how marvelous they are. They can impress people with their knowledge and with their wonderful intellectual brilliance. But then gradually what happens is, there is no place for the intellect to go. It peters out. Einstein invented everything he was ever going to invent by the age of 25. The rest of his life was spent in a futile chase to find a force he couldn't find, called the fifth force, the unifying force. He died a bitter man. He couldn't get to God through his mind. What happens to people is that they become terribly cerebral, intellectual and serious, and they try to make their mind their God. And bit by bit, the mind can't sustain being God because there's a limit to what the intellect can discover and know. In the end, they become angry and fearful. So if you really fear death, you've probably made your intellect your God. Take the mind to one side and tell it, Hey, little intellect, you're jolly handy when it comes to working out the bank balances, but you're not God. You're just a mind, and there's a limit to how much you're going to discover in this lifetime, and there's a limit to your usefulness. So back off and shut up. Once you come out of mind, then you come out of stagnation, you come out of hatred, you come out of frustration. You go past the anger you experience when people don't see your mind as being as incredible as you think it is. You come out of the fact that people don't respond to this terribly arrogant mind that is swooping down on them from a great height. You become a real person. In the end, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to go from the neurotic aspects of the intellect to becoming real. Living in truth, accepting the truth, accepting what is real. Not buying the ego's vision. Not buying the mind that comes up with these enormous arrogances and makes itself into a false god. Thou shalt not have false gods. And the false gods thou shalt not have is your intellect. Embrace spirit. Embrace the infinity within you. It's beyond coming and going. Beyond life and death.